Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start. Uh, I think my audio is working, but let me know. Um, so a couple announcements before I get started here. Um, I just realized I hadn't gotten back the third test. Uh, I forgot to do that. I'll get that back here right after we're done here. So uh, I usually try to do that before our meeting here. Uh, but the other thing is um, um, I was actually on purpose. I haven't posted like an example solution for the third uh, program assignment. Um, um, I was waiting. I thought some people were going to resubmit. Uh, some people had submitted um, the wrong file. So in, in one case, it was just a misnamed file. In the other case, somebody tried to zip it by hand instead of using the make submit command. But uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, I, I was expecting uh, you guys to uh, correct that and submit that so I could uh, look at assignment three. So you should take care of that. Should have been done before now. So. Um, all right, but yeah, so well, I'll, I'll, um, yeah, I would have usually talked about the test three here, but um, uh, maybe I'll leave that since I haven't really graded it yet. So, uh, so, so as usual, I mean, I, I thought we would talk about the um, problem set four. I'll try to keep that relatively short, um, and uh, then we'll get started on the third programming, uh, the the fourth program assignment, the assignment for this week here. So. Um, okay. Uh, so I think I'm only going to say a little bit about the first one and the third one here. So there's actually what four parts this time, um, and they're um, all of them are pretty different kinds of things. Or they're, they're really four separate questions this time instead of. Um, being related. So um, for the first part here, I'm kind of looking for, um, so in, uh, so, so we're going over what chapter seven and eight on memory management and virtual memory. So uh, the first question here is from chapter seven, I believe. Yeah, section 7.2. Uh, so chapter seven talks a little bit about some um, memory management so some some historical uh, approaches to managing memory. So some things that led to what we think of as modern paging and segmentation systems. Um, so so yeah, they they called this uh, dynamic partitioning um, or uh, what fixed partitioning. So, so here we're looking at dynamic partitioning. So dynamic partitioning is kind of like a precursor to what we would call a memory segmentation approach or memory segmentation system nowadays. So basically the idea is that the, instead of dividing up memory into fixed blocks, that would be um, fixed segmentation or, um, or or like a paging system. Um, we instead, whenever there's a request to allocate some memory, we, we allocate exactly the amount of memory that was requested. Um, so basically we're, we're uh, in that case, the allocations that we uh, create to assign for programs or processes to use uh, can be of different sizes, whatever the need size is. So for a dynamic partitioning scheme, we need to keep track of, you know, which blocks of memory have been allocated and also which blocks haven't. So that, that's what the free uh, block list is, right? So this will be like a, usually this is implemented as like a linked list where there's like a link to the first block in memory that's currently not allocated. Um, and then from there, it links to the next hole in memory, the next block in memory and so on, okay? So if you think of this as a linked list, hopefully then this first question should make make, make sense. Um, I want this really kind of uh, answered in terms of, you know, think back to algorithmic complexity. So you probably should have taken, um, 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 you know, at least an undergraduate, if not taken, retaken sort of our, uh, algorithms um, class uh, here. Um, so, you know, best fit, what would it be in terms of uh, you know, if the free block list is is sized in, you know, so if there's 10 items on the free block list, uh, how long, what, what would be the performance relatively for, you know, like a best fit approach versus a first fit versus a next fit. So. Um, all right, and where, you know, I'm, I'm expecting you to have read, you know, the, the chapter seven on partitioning system, but, you know, basically best fit is if I've got 
10 free blocks. Um, uh, I need to, the best fit is I want to pick the one that's closest. You know, so if I requested a megabyte of memory, I want to get the, the free block that's closest to a megabyte, although it has to be uh, the same size or bigger. So even if there's one that's really close, but it's, it's too small. Uh, so anything that's too small doesn't work for any of these best fit, first fit, next fit. You can only consider things that are the same size or bigger. Um, uh, one of these free blocks um, to satisfy a new allocation request. All right. So hopefully that, uh, hopefully everybody understands that. Um, um, questions about that one? So your answer for that doesn't have to be too long, um, but but yeah, I should discuss it. Give me a, a few sentences or so for each of these. So what you think it is, you know, um, O of N or O N squared or constant time or something like that um, and why. Um, All right, and then I thought I would, I would give a little bit of some hints on number three here. I, I, maybe I'll talk about four too. But um, um, so for three, um, some things you should understand about this. Um, so here, th this is from a uh, paging system. So again, chapter seven also talked about paging segmentation system. So, so paging is kind of the modern version of this. Um, uh, the, the idea in a paging system is that we divide up memory into fixed size blocks. So, the, so the, the fixed size blocks or the page size is one kilobyte here, all right? Um, so we've got a little program and, and we ask you to analyze um, um, the behavior, the page fault behavior uh, of this program, given this information here. So some things that I expect you to be able to figure out that's useful to know. Now each page size is a kilobyte. Uh, each one of these integers takes four bytes, okay? So uh, we, we declare uh, three two-dimensional arrays here that are all 64 by 64. So there's actually, what, 64 times 64 values in each of these arrays, uh, integers in each of these arrays. So, so there's actually, what, um, uh, what 4,096 values, integers, but each of those integers is actually four bytes. So uh, technically each each one of those arrays, A, B, C, needs uh, 16,384 bytes. And that, that's 16 kilobytes, right? And so it's a page is one kilobyte. Each one of these needs 16 pages um, if, if we wanted to load the whole thing in memory, right? Or, or each one has 16 pages of data in these arrays, uh, A, B, and C. Um, and, you know, so as, as discussed kind of here, uh, basically only one kilobytes uh, will fit on a page. That translates to um, the first four rows. So, so if this is a, a laid out by rows, um, um, row zero through row three, uh, would be in the first page or the first kilobyte here, right? Because again, because in that case, there's there's uh, four rows times sixty four values. So so um, 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 so there's two hundred fifty six integers, uh, and that's uh, uh, actually one thousand twenty four bytes, which is one kilobyte, right? So, so that's what this is trying to hint at, you know. So, so um, um, you need 16 pages in total. Uh, each page has four rows of the 64 rows um, uh, in the array A, B, C. All right. If you understand that, then I think you should be able to get this question. Um, so, you know, uh, I mean, look at so. Oh, so, I mean, we've, we've got a small memory here. We've got actually just four pages of memory. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to use one of the pages um, will actually hold the code, will hold the instructions, leaving three pages for data, okay? So uh, what we're assuming happens is that we load one page of A, one page of B, and one page of C, 
so that if we have the correct page of A, B, and C in here, we can perform this operation. So we can fetch the value referred to by whatever the current uh, values of I and J are uh, for the, the page for uh, array A, and then, and then load the value for the page for B, say, for example, to two separate registers, add those together, and then store that result into the page that's currently uh, loaded uh, in primary memory for C, right? Um, so basically what happens, for example, um, if I had the, the, the page in A that holds rows zero through three, as soon as I try to reference row four, I'm gonna have a page fault is gonna occur. That's what I was talking about here. So we're gonna have to load the, the, a different page of A, B, and C uh, once we need to process row four, all right? So anyway, I mean, you know, I don't think I'm giving anything away, but, but you should be able to figure out how many page faults are going to occur given the code that we show here. Um, and, um, and it's really, this code is, is very inefficient. So there's a, a simple modification that will uh, greatly minimize the page faults if you sit down and think about this. All right. Any questions about that one? All right. Um, so then, and, and then I guess I will say a, a little bit about uh, four here. So um, in the chapter eight, we talk about various um, page replacement schemes. Um, so so there's a there's a couple, like four or five or six. So besides least recently used in FIFO, um, there are um, a, a clock page replacement scheme that we talk about. Uh, uh, an optimal page replacement scheme, okay? So you ought to know how to do all these. You'll probably see questions like this again on the test, right? Where I give you a stream of page references um, and I tell you that, um, 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 that in this case, we're gonna be simulating a memory that has four physical frames in, uh, in, in main memory here, right? So um, I don't know if I need to bring up the textbook or not, but um, uh, um, but yeah, there's one thing that I want to mention here. Um, so in our chapter nine, we've got the um, um, or sorry, the chapter eight, we've got the. Um, um, in section 8.2, we talk about all these page replacement schemes. Okay? So, you know, for, for paging systems, basically, the, the most, the, the, there's actually lots of other considerations uh, for managing memory, but the the replacement policy, uh, the, so, so I should say the, the page replacement policy um, is the most important in terms of um, um, performance of the operating system, right? And and our our textbook only talks about uh, four uh, here: the least recently used, first in, first out, optimal, and clock. Right? But yeah, I'm basically looking for something like this. Um, so a couple of words on that, and then you ought to be able to do any of these, including clock. Um, but yeah, for this uh, question, I only ask you to do two. I think the LRU and the FIFO. So. Uh, and in this question, so in this example from the textbook, there's three physical frames of memory. You're supposed to be doing uh, this with um, uh, four physical frames of memory. So that's what we mean by four page frames in main memory here. Right. Um, another thing that I, 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 this confuses a lot of people um, that, you know, when they get to this section of the course here. So really, when, when memory is empty here, we're not making replacement decisions. So up to this point where we get the one here, uh, a reference to one, we've actually been making placement decisions, not replacement decisions, okay? So our textbook always, if there's an empty frame in memory, just places a, a page fault, a, 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 a page that doesn't have, that isn't loaded in memory yet, just places it in the next free, uh, physical frame of memory. Okay, so so initially memory is empty, not shown here. So when we have a reference to two, we just place it um, in you know the first frame of memory. 
And then three is also another page fault. So notice he doesn't mark these as page faults. Um, but um, I, I think I, why, why I'm talking about this is because I think I asked you to, to calculate the page fault ratio or the, the page hit ratio. Um, so I'll talk about that there. But really, you should, you should ignore the initial placement. So really, really I, what I want is the page replacement, the, the page fault or the page hit ratio for the, when replacement decisions had to be made. Okay. So up to, up to this point, the first four references, we had a fault, a fault. Uh, we had a hit here. So there's a reference to two. It was loaded already in memory. And then we had uh, a third fault, right? But you can kind of ignore those. Those were faults uh, due to the initial placements. So really, for example, for optimal here, uh, the page fault ratio is there's three faults out of uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, out of eight re replacement decisions that had to be made uh, here, right? So the, the, the most correct answer here would be three out of eight, right? I mean, if you consider all these, you really should consider uh, this, this, and this as a fault as well, right? So secondarily, if we, so if, if we consider both Placement, initial placements and replacements, there should be um, six faults out of a total of what, 11 or 12 references here. Out of, out of 12, so, so six out of 12. All right, hopefully that makes sense. So in terms of calculating the um, page fault ratio here. Um, so I, I wanted the hit ratio, so, you know, I mean, they're they're complements of each other, right? So hopefully that that's not a big uh, issue, right? If, if the page fault ratio is three out of eight, the hit ratio is the complement. So we had five hits out of the eight replacement decisions. Um, five out of eight is our hit ratio. Um, so yeah, I asked you to do LRU FIFO. Um, one other thing here, some people, especially for FIFO, so the, the, you should give me something that looks exactly like this for all these. Like, and for FIFO, you know, the, these frames represent actual physical locations in memory. Okay, so this represents the first frame in memory. So if our if our page size is one kilobyte, this represents the memory addresses from zero to one thousand twenty three, the first kilobyte of memory, and then the second frame represents. The, the second um, uh, kilobyte of memory. So from 1024 to 2047, right? So it's incorrect to like, when I have a fault for three here or a initial placement of three, to have two move down to frame two and put three in one, right? So that's actually one way to implement FIFO because if something gets, if you push something on the top, you could then, the, the thing at the bottom gets pushed out and you're just treating this as if it's a first in first out queue, but that is incorrect for representing FIFO because part of this output is also showing me the actual physical location, you know, so frame one, two or three that the page currently is in memory, you know, so after uh, five faults here. Um, um, we've wrapped back around for the FIFO queue. Uh, we've kicked out. So this was our actually this was our first replacement decision according to FIFO. So uh, once memory was full, um, um, because of the reference to one here, now when we have the reference to five, that's a page fault. So our frame pointer should wrap back around to the first frame of memory. We're going to replace page two. So we're going to kick out two and replace it with five. So that's that's the way FIFO works. Right? But but yeah, I mean, make certain that you understand that um, you know these represent the contents of memory and specifically the location, which frame number each page is in memory. So that, that's part of what you're simulating here. Um, yeah, so for question four, I mean, it should basically look the same as this, um, the, the LRU and the FIFO, except you're gonna have a, a memory with four frames instead of three um, and there's more references. So. Um, if it's not clear, you know, it, it starts here and continues on. So there's what, there's like 40 references here or, or 30 um, total. So this is the first page reference, second, third. Fourth. So yeah, the the uh, one will be a fault. So the, the initial placements will happen, one, zero, two, there'll be a hit there. So we've got three out of four filled up uh, and one is also a hit. So not, not until we get to the seven uh, do we have the initial placements in memory. 
So the initial contents of memory will be one, zero, two, and seven. And then after that point is where you're actually going to get replacement decisions you have to make for FIFO and LRU here. All right. And again, you know, thinking ahead to the tests and stuff, don't neglect clock and optimal. Uh, make certain you could also do that for those, for uh, the others as well. Uh, so you understand how those work. All right, clear enough, other questions? Anybody? Okay, I discussed everything but two. So, but yeah, I mean, two hopefully. Um, this is about paging systems, so. All right, um, let me move on. Let's, let's uh, anybody want to jump in with a last minute question here. Um, uh, I think some people joined after I started. Um, so um, let me just announce again, uh, um, I didn't get back test three. Actually, I kind of forgot about it. So I'll, I'll get that back here. Maybe we'll talk about it on, on um, our next class meeting. Um, but yeah, look for that this afternoon here. But the other thing is that um, uh, on purpose, I haven't really posted an example solution for assignment three. I was expecting some people who had submitted the wrong submission file to correct that, you know, so um, it should have been done by now. So if you want me to grade your assignment three, uh, put the correct submission file up into, um, you know, you know um, uh, up, up into our My Leo here. So. All right, um, let's go ahead then and get started on assignment four. Um, so assignment four, we're gonna be building a memory manager. So let's go ahead and open up the um, assignment four folder. Uh, gee, I had a lot of stuff open here. Last time I was in here for this assignment. Um, as usual, let's make sure everything builds um, and the tests are running before we get started doing anything here. I'll do make clean and build. Um, and let's do our test again. So, you know, you should always be able to, when you start one of these assignments, be able to, it should, everything should build uh, and the test should run, although they'll be failing um, usually um, pretty quickly. So for this assignment, let's open up the description a little bit here. Um, so we're actually going to be uh, implementing uh, memory paging systems. Um, um, so ac actually, um, uh, it would have probably been whoops, it would have been better to say we're going to be implementing uh, the the page replacement. So simulations of the page replacement uh, portions of the memory manager. All right. So. Um, this this assignment has a little bit more of a slightly more complex structure than what we've had before. Um, so let me um, describe it a bit here before I kind of jump in and maybe as usual, uh, kind of get you started on the first task here today. I do want to kind of maybe uh, stop a little bit earlier than usual here today. So, um, okay, so in this assignment, you'll find more files than maybe you're used to for the previous three. Um, so your initial task, you're going to be doing stuff in the paging system. This is really the, the, the thing that manages the, the simulation of the page replacement um, policies here, right? Uh, but there's another set of files called um, page replacement scheme of which um, 
you're given like a FIFO page replacement scheme and a clock page replacement scheme. Okay, so uh, we're actually using a a common object oriented pattern here. Where uh, so what we wanted to be able to do. So if you look at the page system um, header file, um, there, there's there's kind of the usual lots of member variables. Uh, that have to do with running the simulation, um, including uh, a dynamically allocated array that we keep track of. You know, this, this is the physical frames of memory um, that we keep track of which page is loaded into which frame of memory. Um, I'll talk more about those. But um, to finish my thought here, one of the, the um, member variables is that we've got a, um, a pointer to a dynamically allocated page replacement scheme. Okay. So the page replacement scheme um, is what's known as an abstract base class. Um, and in this pattern, um, what we're doing is, uh, what, what's the technical name for this? This, this is a type of, um, 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 th this is a type of, of, of object-oriented design pattern where basically the, the simulation wants to uh, be able to support being able to simulate all the different different types of page replacement schemes. Uh, so we want to be able to create like a new object. Um, so, so basically everything for simulating the um, making the, the specific decisions about different replacement schemes uh, gets uh, encapsulated into a separate class, right? So if I want to do a simulation using the FIFO page replacement scheme, we'll create an instance of a FIFO page replacement scheme class. And we'll point it there. And then, so every time we have to make a page replacement decision, we're actually going to make a call to our instantiated scheme object to tell us, you know, which, which frame uh, I should replace um, or other things, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So, um, so the common way to do that is, is we have to have an abstract base class. That's what the page replacement scheme is. So you'll notice that all the functions, or most all the functions, except for the constructors and things, are uh, C++ uh, pure virtual functions. You can look that up if you don't know what a per pure virtual function is. But what it basically means is we don't actually implement, so, so we don't actually have the code to implement these functions uh, in the base class, the page replacement scheme class. These just define like an interface or an API, right? So the things that all page replacement schemes should be able to do is we should be able to tell it to reset the scheme. Uh, we should be able to tell it to um, uh, that a page hit has occurred. So if it has to keep track of hits, um, um, it can do something with those. Um, I'll talk about this method. This is how we're going to implement the, the system tests with the get scheme status. But the most important one is, is the make replacement decision. So basically, the actual simulation will ask the scheme to make a replacement decision, and it will make the, a replacement decision to, based on the policy that it's implementing. So FIFO or CLOCK or um, LRU or whatever. All right. But yeah, so these are pure virtual functions. So like, for example, if you look at page replacement, that CPP, there's no implementations of those. There's just an implementation of the constructor um, and destructor that doesn't do anything, all right? So instead, uh, all the actual implementations of things for the replacement schemes for, for these policies um, happen in um, these other classes. And notice here we're using inheritance. So here we're using object-oriented inheritance to say that a, a FIFO page replacement scheme is a you know, publicly inherit. So it is a page replacement scheme. And since we want to make this a concrete class, we have to actually implement all of those things that were declared as virtual, pure virtual functions um, in the, uh, the header file that defines basically the interface, okay? So FIFO is going to have implementations of all of those virtual functions, reset scheme, page hit, get scheme status, um, and make replacement. Uh, not to mention also um, it might keep track of other private member variables, okay? So so here, you know, um, I'm, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but FIFO, basically the way to do that is, is you just keep track of a frame pointer. Um, here we're going to use frame starting at frame zero of memory. Um, uh, so we'll use zero-based indexing. 
Um, and then every time you make a you need to make a replacement decision, whatever the frame pointer is pointing to, you'll kick that page out um, and replace it um, with the next reference page. Okay, so we can see how that works for FIFO. You're given FIFO. Um, you're going to have to implement clock basically in this assignment. So, um, so I'll skip over kind of. Um, so in this in this case, FIFO doesn't do anything for a page hit. You'll have to do something for a page hit with the clock, but, but the page hit is empty. Um, FIFO doesn't care about when page hits occur. Um, so basically in the simulation, um, make replacement decision is gonna be called um, whenever a page fault occurs, okay? So whenever the main simulation determines that there's a page fault uh, because the, the current reference page is not um, in physical memory, um, it will ask the scheme to make a replacement decision. So the way you do that for FIFO uh, is whatever the frame pointer is pointing to, you're going to return that as the frame to replace, right? And then what you need to do in preparation for the next replacement decision you have to make for FIFO is you need to increment the frame pointer wrapping it around. So here we increment the frame pointer by one, uh, and then we check if, um, 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 you know, so if we've only got three physical frames of memory, uh, if we increment this to be, uh, if it was pointing to two, which is the last valid index in, in a memory with three frames, you know, so again, if we have three frames, we're using zero-based indexing, the valid frame pointers or indexes are zero, one, and two, right? So if I was at two and I increment to three, I need to wrap it back around to zero. So by modding by the memory size, which if it's three, this will return three here, uh, will give us a remainder of zero and that will wrap us back around, all right? So that's what the FIFO is doing here. And, and again, we implemented this for you, right? Oh, and notice, um, so part of these, um, part of the API for the FIFO, for the page replacement schemes um, is that when you create a page replacement scheme, you, you pass in a, a pointer to the paging system. So that if, if these schemes need to, to find out information in general about the, the simulation, um, they can just uh, call any public member method of the paging system, right? So in particular, you know, this is a good example of that. So, you know, uh, the, the size of memory that we're simulating um, is going to be specified whenever we create a paging system simulation. So, you know, um, that information is held by the paging uh, system. So if we need to know what the current memory size is, we ask, ask it and get that from there. And you can call any other method of the paging system in here if you need to, to get information about the current simulation. All right. Um, so I think that's enough background. Hopefully that um, um, will help you out. will make some sense as you start working on the assignment for here. Um, So basically the first four tasks though, you're gonna be doing kind of what you've been doing mostly so far for assignments. You're gonna be implementing some missing number methods in the page replacement scheme.cpp, okay? So in particular, uh, the, very, the first one is we have to implement a couple of missing um, um, getter methods, okay? So hopefully this, this is meant to be a bit of a warm up. Hopefully everybody can get, get these. So, um, you know, uh, as usual, you know, I'll, I'll go ahead and get you started on those, show you those. So, um, in our page replacement scheme, um, we've got, um, or not page replacement, in, in our paging system. Um, so, this is the one, this is where you're going to be implementing your first four tasks here. We've got um, some methods, including get memory size, get system time. Most of these correspond to um, member variables directly. So um, close off a little bit of this here. So 
you know, like the system time, the memory size um, um, should be part as part of creating a new paging system. Those will those will be initialized for the most part. System time should start off at zero. Um, memory size will be whatever we specify when we create a new paging system simulation, things like that. So um, most of these, if I remember right, um, you just need to, to get these implemented, you just need to return the corresponding memory, the, the corresponding member um, variable of the class. So. So, you know, if, if memory size, so yeah, let's go back and look at the tests. Um, so the very first test is a five. So, you know, um, we can uh, create a simulation. The first parameter uh, for the constructor when you create a simulation is the memory size. So, so here in our very first test, we're setting up a simulation with five physical frames of memory. So if we ask it to get what the memory size is, it should return five, right? So by um, implementing that, um, Getter method, um, it should be able to pass that test if we were to get to the file and uh, run our tests. Um, so now the first failing test is on line 30 here, 33. Um, so it's actually passing, get system time, although these are because the constructor is probably initializing these to zero. So, but so you do need to. Um, so even though it'll get past those, um, 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 later on it, um, um, but won't be passing those until you also implement. You know, the they get um, system time correctly and the number of page references and things like that. Um, yeah, I think you only need to do those three. So, um, a few more hints about this, about the way that the paging system simulation works here. So, You'll notice I, I skipped over. So, so these these page streams that we load are, are, are pretty simple uh, compared to some of the the past simulations that we've done. So, for example, the page reference one stream this should be the same as from the the examples from our textbook. So, each line represents a, a reference to um, a page number um, through time here. So, this is time zero. We have a reference to page two. Um, this should be the same one from our textbook here. So two, three, two, one, five, so on. Right. Uh, the first line is just the number, the total number of page references. Okay. So um, when you load one of these page streams in order to simulate uh, making page replacement decisions, um, um, it basically loads those in there for you. So you know, so so that that first page reference stream has 12 page references um, and those are the values uh, over time of the, of the page references here so um, so if it's not clear um, the the number of page references is that is, is the total number of references that we're going to simulate that we're going to load from these sim files so 12 in this case is the number of page references uh, and then the actual page references get loaded into um, another array called page reference, right? So to implement some of these other tasks later on, uh, if, if the current time is zero, uh, you know, or, or like it says here, if the current time is five, you need to look up what page is referenced at time five, right? So, so you know, this is the, the page at time zero, one, two, three, four, five. So the page that gets referenced at time five for the simulation is page two. So anyway, that's that's how you'll be using um, uh, the, this page reference array here. Um, all 
All right. Uh, questions about anything so far? You might want to clarify. So I'm only going to discuss uh, the remaining of these for these first four tasks. Um, although you know we might get into a little bit more details on Thursday if people have questions about these. Uh, so um, for task two, there is a. Um, Uh, there's a memory method called is memory full. So uh, I'm gonna stop clicking on that. Uh, um, so basically this function is gonna return a Boolean result. Um, so it should return false if all the, the memory frames are empty memory frames uh, in front, um, if, if any of the frame is currently empty. Um, and we'll return true if they're all not empty, okay? So for this one um, to implement Task two here. Um, um, basically, you'll know what the current contents of memory are in the array called memory, um, and uh, the the total number of frames that you have is saved in the memory size. Uh, uh, this gets initialized, so, so the memory gets initialized. Let's just look at that constructor. Um, so yeah, you didn't have to write this this time, but uh, basically, you know, if, if we initialize a memory with five physical frames, we dynamically allocate that array um, to have, uh, you know, a uh, size five or whatever the memory size is specified here. Uh, page number is really just a type def for um, an int. So if you look at the um, um, top of the paging system by HPP, uh, we're just using uh, unsigned ints for the page number. Okay, so you know the, the this contents of memory um, are just unsigned ints, right? And we initialize all those. I guess we do that when we do the reset system. We initialize all those. Let's look at the reset system here um, to be an empty frame. Okay, so again, empty frame is defined as a global constant. Um, um, is defined as zero. So we only use page numbers uh, one or bigger um, in these uh, sim files. So zero uh, can be used safely to represent uh, an invalid page number uh, since we'll never use zero. Or smaller, and so, so that's what we're using uh, to represent an empty frame, right? Um, and yeah, so initially we initialize all memory to be empty. So you know, back to uh, is memory full? You know, you need to do something similar, but you need to check every frame of memory. Uh, if, if you find any frame um, that is empty, you need to return false for the is memory full. Um, otherwise, if, if if every frame um, is not the empty frame, so if every frame actually has a page in it, then the answer should be um, true. You know, from the uh, 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 is memory full uh, function here. Okay, so we're gonna this we're using this function uh, later on in the simulation to determine whether we're doing an initial page placement or doing uh, an actual page replacement. So so that's kind of what you know. So if if it's not true that memory is full, that means we have some empty frames. So we have to do just page placements. So, so we just do a standard find the next empty um, frame of memory and, and place the new reference into that empty frame. Right? But if memory, if it's true that memory is full, um, we call the do page replacement, which ultimately calls the, the make page replacement method on some re page replacement scheme um, object. Um, all right, so for task three, you have to implement the is page hit. Um, so this is the important function that's used when we're making replacement decisions, okay? So the very first thing you do for a replacement decision in, is ask, is this new page reference, is it a hit or a fault, right? If it's a fault, 
you have to make a replacement decision by calling the scheme and asking it to make a replacement decision. If it's a hit, you don't have to do, actually, if it's a hit, uh, you're going to call the, um, um, the page hit on the scheme because some page replacement schemes need to know when hits occur as well as faults, right? So basically, whenever a hit occurs, page hit gets called on the page replacement scheme. And whenever a, a fault occurs, uh, a make replacement decision gets called um, to make a replacement decision and, and replace the page that caused the page fault. To replace a page uh, with the page that caused uh, the page fault. So, um, All right. So, is page hit has some similarity to the um, um, uh, is memory full? But in this case, what you need to do is uh, look through memory um, and and search. You know, you have, you have to look at the current system time to find the the, re the page that was referenced at that time, and you have to find if that page that was referenced at the current system time is in memory or not. Right. So if it's in memory, then you return immediately it's a page hit. But if you search through all the memory um, and the reference page is not in memory, um, then is page hit should return false um, um, because there, there's a page that was referenced, but it's not currently in, in memory. Um, yeah, and then finally, uh, actually uh, in this assignment, we implemented the due page replacement for you. Um, that's a slightly tougher to, but you do still have one more task before you do. The, this assignment is really two parts. So the first four tasks um, are all done in the um, paging system class. And then the next four are basically to implement the, the clock page replacement um, that actually hasn't been implemented yet. So. Um, but yeah, so the due page placement, uh, that's making an initial placement decision. So here, Again, like I was saying, if if it's not true that memory is full, due page placement is going to be called. So to implement due page placement, you just need to find the next empty frame um, and uh, place the, the 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 page that was referenced in that empty frame, right? So, so yeah, if memory is not full, um, you should search through memory, find the first frame that is currently an empty frame. And once that's found, um, I'm going to replace the current reference page um, and re replace that empty frame with the current reference. All right. Um, any questions about that? So um, I'm not going to go through all the details of this. Uh, I'll leave this. We, we could, this this will be a good thing that we can talk in more detail um, on Thursday. Um, how you do the clock page replacement, um, but basically, you know, after you've done your regions, if you haven't done them already, um, one thing that you should come to understand is that the the clock paging schemes are kind of a uh, um, a compromise between uh, least recently used and FIFO. But the clock placement, placement scheme has similarities to both, um, including, you know, we, we keep track of a frame pointer for a clock uh, page replacement like we do for FIFO. Um, but we have an extra thing where we keep track of this, what was known as the use bit, okay? Another thing that um, um, hopefully it was clear in my lecture videos, um, clock Page replacement schemes are basically what are used um, uh, in real operating systems for making page replacement decisions. Okay, so so paging is by far the most common uh, way of doing memory management as a as opposed to using segmentation. Um, and um, it turns out that uh, least recently used is actually the, will give you the best performance in terms of minimizing page faults. But least recently used has quite a bit of overhead. And so in order to, to determine 
which frame was least recently used to kick it out, you have to do something like keep a full timestamp of, of, of all the pages when they were referenced or something similar to that. Um, so that can require some overhead. So clock page replacement ends up being like a compromise um, between FIFO and uh, least recently used. So it, it has performance close to least recently used um, normally, uh, but with not as much overhead. So, um, um, so for clock, we need a frame pointer, but we also need a second uh, bit of information, use bits, uh, which are going to be either one or zero, true or false. I usually think of the use bits as Boolean types. Um, so you, you would need like an array of Booleans, for example, um, that's true if the use bit is set uh, and false if the use bit is not set. Um, so let me see, I have to remember here, but yeah, so uh, if you look at what you're given to start with, with the clock page replacement, um, basically, um, you're going to have to implement all of these member functions. They're all kind of missing, right? Um, and uh, but a good place to start. So if you if you just start with FIFO. Uh, so, so a lot of these will be similar to the FIFO implementation, but you just need to do some extra stuff, right? So, for example, if we look at the FIFO implementation of reset scheme, all it does is uh, if, if we're resetting uh, the simulation, it's, it's, it sets the frame pointer back to zero. So you'd have to do the same thing. The other thing you might have to do, though, so for, for a clock, you need to have a frame pointer, but you also have to have an array of use bits. So you might need to also set your use bits back to all uh, what, what the correct initial value is. So that would be the additional thing you'd have to do for like reset. Likewise, um, just as another one, um, like I said, we can talk in more details about these. I don't want to give too much details here, leave a little bit for Thursday, but um, um, you need to do kind of the same thing when you make a replacement decision, but for a clock, you don't automatically just replace whatever the frame pointer is pointing to. So what the way clock works is you first need to scan through memory. So if you need to, whatever the, the frame pointer is pointing to, you have to check the use bit. And if the use bit is zero, then you're going to select that page to be replaced, right? But if the use bit is one, you flip the use bit to zero, uh, increment the frame pointer, wrapping around if necessary, um, uh, and, and then check that one, right? And you keep doing that until you find um, a frame whose use bit is zero. And that's the one you stop at uh, and return as the frame to replace for the basic clock paging algorithm, right? And, you know, clock, I mean, if all of the use bits are one, basically what happens, and, and our textbook shows this uh, in the examples of the clock, um, algorithm. So, so if all the use bits are one, you end up scanning all the way through memory, flipping them all to zero. You, you'll end up wrapping back around to the place you started. And, the, and at that point, you'll find that its use bit is zero. So you'll end up replacing that. But if not all the use bits are one, um, you'll just scan and you'll stop as soon as you find the first one whose use bit is zero um, and return that one. All right. Um, I think that's enough to get you started. Um, like I said, you know, we've still got another meeting where we can talk about this assignment. Um, so yeah, there's more discussion about you know how you go about implementing uh, each of those things, including replacement decision and the the reset scheme and um, page hit. Yeah, so there is, uh, unlike for FIFO, where you don't have to do anything for a page hit, for the clock page replacement scheme on a hit, the use bit should be set to one. So, you know, if the use bit was zero, that, that's how use bits get flipped to one, is anytime page hits occur, um, you set to one. So, so, yeah, so unlike for clock, you have to do something on page hits, or un unlike for FIFO, you have to do something for page hits for um, clock scheme. Uh, All right, um, 
Any last questions there? That was kind of all I wanted to go over here today. Um, all right, so I'll assume everybody's kind of um, got enough information at least to get started. Um, as usual, I'll post this video for anybody that needs to look at it after the fact, um, although we pretty much had everybody on here today, I think. Um, but yeah, you can always send emails if you need to. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'll see you guys um, on Thursday then.